So today in this video, we're going to learn how to deploy a Deep Lab, Deep Lab V3 model on the OD camera using the Depth AI API in C++. So right here's a, an example in Python, but I couldn't find an example in C++. So I figured I would you know, try to attempt it and, and share it with anyone who's interested. So you can basically emulate it emulate the Python code in C++, but there's some nuances to know about. And so I tried, I'll try to cover those. I'm not going to go over all this in detail. I'm just going to gloss over it and go through the things that were places where I got stuck. So before, before I get started, I'm going to just run the code real quick so you can see the results. And I did some, I did this a little bit differently than the example. The example computes the segments over the disparity. I actually compute the optical flow over the segmentation. So, Here's the mask from the model. It's a one. It's just a binary mask. It's person or not person. You can actually add more, more, um, you know, models with more masks if you want using this same framework. So here's the video running at about 25 hertz, and without the optical flow, it runs at about 32 hertz. And here's what I call the flow filter. It's just this optical flow over the segmented area, and you can see we're tracking all the pixels. So. I think we can get started walking through the code now. So I'm in Visual Studio. I have the minute I have the Depth AI and OpenCV set up. If you don't know how to set this up, I actually have another video that shows how to install Depth AI for Windows and how to set up set it up in Visual Studio. I'll link it below if you need to watch that and figure it out. So I guess one thing to note right here where I'm getting the model from and the Python version. Anytime you go to Python, you can just do this, use this OpenVINO API blob converter. It'll get the model straight from the model zoo. But in this case, I'm just taking it from a local path. So when you actually run that, run this code right here, it stores it on a local path to your PC. And I'm just grabbing it from here. So I'm using the 256 by 256 model, so I am going to make sure I resize everything to that. So, so down here, we're going to set up the RGB camera. Um, nothing, nothing crazy there. We're going to use some. We're going to make sure we resize the preview to the appropriate width and height. So the preview is a little bit different from the regular camera. So the regular camera is a rectangular output. And the preview is actually a cropped one by one aspect ratio that's taken out of the middle that you can see right here. So we're not actually going to warp the image or distort it by make, by resizing it to a one by one aspect ratio. It's already a one by one aspect ratio, which is good for the model. So we're going to make sure it's BGR. I took the straight from Python and that that's going to be we're going to set the FPS to 40, even though it doesn't run that fast. <coughs> we have our linking right here to link our we set our camera stream to our name to RGB. And right here is where we create the neural network node. So the neural network node is more of a custom node. It's not like the YOLO node where we have a YOLO detection model. This is a little bit more generic. So now we're going to link the camera preview to the network node. So we're going to actually input the one x one one by one aspect ratio preview that's resized to what we want it to be right here into the input of the neural network. And now we're going to link our neural network output to xlink out and we're going to call it detections. So right here we're going to make a output queue for our camera and our neural network. And now we can start the while loop and we can actually stream the data in to these variables right here. And these are, these are our type data output queue. So right here is just some, just some stuff to update the frames per second. So if we, if we get an RGB from our output stream, we're going to actually get the frame and save it to this um, CV mat right here frame. So I'll, I'll go over these right here. So we have a frame for our camera output mask, for our segmentation mask, and the mass frame, we mask the frame. Um, we have our, the BGR flow, so this is the output of the optical flow 
over the masked area. And this is what I call flow filled, is where I just combine the flow onto the original frame. And then this right here, this is a, still another ma matrix, but we just need to make it the same width and height as the as the regular frame. So this is actually going to be the previous input for optical flow, and this is going to be the current input for the optical flow. So I want to make it the same width and height, same type. And for the first um, pass, I set it to all zeros. And then right here and this... This vector right here is where we're going to store the detections. So this is, we're initially going to store the segmentation mask as a vector of int 32 T's. And we're going to convert it to an OpenCV matrix. So let's come down here. So, so right here, when we have our input detections, we have this function, this um, thing called get get in first layer in 32 so that is an in data attribute so what this does is this actually gets in 32 values from the output of the neural network and it says first layers tensor I'm not 100% sure why but that's basically what it does it gets our segmentation mask so I have this function called get mask right here and what this does, we just place this in a OpenCV matrix that we call mask, and we convert it to um, an eight eight bit integer unsigned, and we scale it by two fifty five. So it's going to be full of values from zero either that are either zero or two fifty five, and that will allow us to display it. So. Okay, right here. So basically, then we want to resize it to the target height, then we can display it. So now, right here, if we have a frame, we have this function called crop to square. So what crop to square does is it basically crops it to a square. All it really does is it takes this output and crops it to this um, same same place as the preview preview output. So you could actually stream the preview. When we come here to set everything up, so we could actually link this preview to the camera stream, but we're actually but if we do that, we're going to get a mix. I tried it, and so I'm still still going through the API, and you actually get a mix of um, one by one aspect ratios, and then the regular um, 1280 by 720 aspect ratio. So it's no good. Um, crop to square is probably the way to go here. And we're going to resize it to the output, target height and width. So that's 400 by 400. And then this is the C++ way to copy a frame. You can't do a logical and. You This is how you mask it. And we're going to go ahead and write the, F, the frame, FPS on it. And then we're going to compute the optical flow. So this optical flow right here, it's not necessarily optimized, but we convert everything to grayscale. Um, use the OpenCV function to calculate the Farnbeck optical flow, which is the dense optical flow. And then we have some code that helps us visualize it as a color matrix. And this is over the segmented area. And if you were to do it over, say, not the segmented area, it's actually a little bit slower. So it's a little bit faster to segment than compute the optical flow. So we're going to combine the flow onto the onto the frame, and then we're going to go ahead and display everything, which is kind of overkill if you ask me. So I'm going to run this again. I'm not going to show the frame. I am not going to show the masked frame. And I'm not even going to show the mask. And so right here, Make, we have to make sure since we're using that we need to compare the previous frame with the current frame to compute the flow, the difference between pixels on each frame. We need to save, make sure we save the mass, the current mass frame to the previous mass frame, and we make a copy because we need to reset the regular mass frame. So what happens when we don't reset this to all zeros? The mass frame actually, well, I'll just show you. 
So it actually set this one. Okay, so at the next frame, that I'm not resetting it, but then it actually just kind of goes crazy. So we got we got to reset the mass frame, but it kind of makes a cool effect. So that's what that does. So I'll undo it, and I'll just run the code one more time. You can see the results, and and there's kind of a lot of cool effects you can do from this. But I'm going to leave it simple for this video. And, all right, here it is. Here's the flow filter. Here's the masked op masks optical flow. And you can see as I move around, you can see the flow changing. So we can kind of track the, the pixels. And you can see it gets the hand too. And all right, that's it. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed this. You can see we do this in two, less than 200 lines of code. So, all right, I'll see you on the next one.